Hello, I'm Tony from Bonner's Music and today is an extremely exciting day because it's the launch of Yamaha's brand new Montage M series of flagship synthesizer workstations. I'm going to be joined in the studio today by Mike Patrick, who's not only an amazing composer and performer, but he also holds the rank of being a Yamaha artist, which is something that's reserved for only the world's very best musicians. So I genuinely haven't seen or touched the Montage M yet, so Mike suggested that we keep it under wraps until we start shooting the video so it captures my natural reaction. As always, I'm going to include as many playing and sound examples in this video as possible, so ensure you're listening through a nice set of speakers or quality earphones. Montage M is going to be available to try in Bonner's piano and keyboard stores very soon, so get in touch if you'd like to come and test drive one for yourself. And we also offer a trade-in deal, so if you have a previous generation instrument that you'd like to upgrade to a new Montage M, just complete the trade-in form on our website and we'll get right back to you with a valuation. So let's meet Mike and the Yamaha Montage M. So uh, Yamaha seven years ago made the Montage, uh, which is, a, I mean, a massive keyboard. It, it did really, really well. Um, and now, I mean, I'm excited because it, it, wait until you see what they've done now. It's incredible, yeah. honestly, it really is. And you've been, you've been a Montage user, what, since the beginning or? Uh, I started using the Montage around 2018. Yeah. I became a Yamaha artist 2019, but I've always loved Yamaha. Little secret yeah. my dad used to play as well, and his first keyboard was a Yamaha as well. So I've grown up yeah. kind of just playing the Motif and the EX5 and all the other Simps and stuff. Well, I remember since the, since the EX series, they've yeah. been very consistent. Uh, all the way through, yep, and yep. very very popular in church circles as well. Oh, they? one found there's certain yeah. sounds that are just signature for church. Yeah. So yeah, it's this is a really really big deal. I've heard some of your uh, some of your demos you've done and some of the oh, work you've done on on YouTube. Yeah, check out uh, some of Mike's work on YouTube. Some <laughs> of the patches he made for the original Montage, they they sound amazing. Oh man, but. Knowing what you can do with that old one, I can't <laughs> wait to hear what you're going to do with this. Honestly, I, I'm actually really, really, because he, you've, he's not seen anything. He's. I not... really haven't. I haven't seen. I honestly haven't seen. I've seen the pictures. There's been these things uh, released on uh, on various social media sites mm. of, of uh, spy shots and all this. Yeah. And, but I haven't seen it in the flesh. So this is the closest I've come to touching it. And it's through a cloth <laughs> at the moment. So. Yeah. Well, Super excited. So you're going to let me see it? <laughs> yes. Should we? Should we? Do you want to, should I, or do you want to? You do it. And All I'll... right, cool. All right, here we go. First time, here we go. Watch his face. There it is. Wow. There it is. Actually, question, what's, what's the first thing that? The first thing that comes to our, well, loads of controllers. Yep. And uh, the screen, the second screen. Yeah, yeah. And that's much bigger than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. You... I've seen some pictures of it, and I've also seen, uh, I mean, Yamaha's Genos, which has got a small screen, yep. as has a, there's another brand of keyboard that also has another secondary screen. Yep. But it, again, they tend to only be one line, but that, that well, looks great. The thing is, I, I mean, obviously we've not turned it on yet, but when you see the actual screen as well, it, even though it looks big, when you see the parameters and how it even like animates the parameters, it's like, oh wow, it's actually like So a, it's, it's not just digits and numbers, it's, it's a little no, bit more graphical. It's diagrams it? and yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I like these, these category buttons. Yeah, I think that was my favourite edit. Because if I'm being honest, I always loved the original montage, but I never really used like that kind of area to change sounds properly. I'd always be using the touch screen. So now I think the biggest change about the montage gem is, is that the parameters now, you can actually do it on touch screen or just press buttons, which is... It's right. Really okay. Good. I had read that there are some like there are ways of jumping to parameters quite quickly and things, yeah. aren't they? Which yeah. is great. Yeah. Oh, you you know some stuff. I've read. Yeah, I've read up as much as I can on it, but I, obviously <laughs> nothing's the same as actually uh, touching it. So. Yep. Well, can we plug it in and we we might as well have a listen? Yeah. Let's go. Right. Okay. Right. I'll get some cables. Wicked. Right. So where do we start? <laughs> <laughs> it looks amazing. <laughs> Colours everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? When they first said, you know, we've got a, you know a new montage, I thought it was just going to be like an upgrade. But I think yeah. since I've played this and I've said it a few times, it's a completely brand new instrument. Like so much has changed to the point where it's like you can't look at it as an upgrade. It's like a completely new keyboard, you know. Yeah. It's, it, <laughs> it, yeah. I just want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> well. I mean, I'll leave you to 
You okay. know, ask, I mean, what sound do you want? And I'll give you, should we start with piano? Yeah, start just... with the piano, guys. Oh, right. Yeah. So we've got, a, they've, what they've done is they've put some of the new pianos from the YC into the montage. So okay. Got, like, this one's called the Nashville Vintage. Right, um, okay. So yeah, have a play have and see what you think. I'll just better check the volume here. We're only... <laughs> so excited, we haven't actually done a sound check <laughs> yet. <true>. <laughs> sample is that? It's a completely new sample actually. Um, I love that. Do you know what? The keyboard feels great. That's what I was going to say. You know what? Uh, obviously I've not even had it for long but I can say it's a completely new key bed. But it's light but... But that's exactly what... yeah. It's a completely new key bed that they've put into this Montage gem. Very warm sound. Yeah, yeah. Well, nice. That's, that's, I have to say, it's nice listening to someone else play. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed right. that. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, yeah, that's great. So, is it, is it still work with scenes in the way the old one? Did? Yes, the scenes have moved now. They've moved the scenes here. Um, it's really weird because it's almost like even though they've moved, they were here before they've moved here. Yeah. Just naturally, it just feels a lot, a lot more natural. Um, they've added new, they've done so much, they've added two new shift buttons. We've now got a, a designated portamento. Yeah. We've got ribbon, oh, like a that? ribbon control, which I've never used on the keyboard, to be honest, but I'll get to that later on because yeah. there's something interesting they've done. Uh, Do you know, just noticing with the those lights, LED lights on there, that's yeah. really handy. It's almost it? like steps, so you've got, you know, and I mean a set to toggle and toggle off but I can you know uh, yeah you can set it so it, yeah so it's almost like that's four parameters in itself in one controller which is cool it's cool um one of the big things I like is they've streamlined the category and live set yep. so now you're in live set mode and you can control what sounds you choose from just the buttons uh, okay so you uh, so these correspond with the the yeah. 16 sounds on the screen. Basically, yeah. So it's Just all... remind me, did the old one do that? Or no? I know it didn't have these. It didn't, it didn't do that. Normally what you'd have to do is you'd have to select via touch. I mean, you could still navigate, but the good thing about it this time is I can go to performance mode and still be controlling my live set in order, which is great. So it's, oh. it, it's just a lot more efficient, you know? Yeah, well it is. And also if you're playing live on stage, you need to change quickly. Exactly. That's doing it on screen isn't quite so accurate, is yeah, it? So it's being true. able to do that is yeah, that's you just great. know no matter what, it's gonna yeah. go straight to your sound, and then you can still jump from performance. In the original, you'd move to performance mode, and the bank would change. Yes, so you, you'd be scrolling through a different bank when you wanted to stay in the live set bank, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So no, um, great. Yeah. A little bit about the keyboard. I mean, uh, what the big difference is is that it's got you know three new engines. Well, it's got yes. one new engine, but it's got two that have been almost improved. Okay. Um, and so it's got what they call ANX. Sure. Which is from the AN1X, which is one of the keyboards Yamaha yes. made in 1997. I remember selling those in the 1990s. Oh, right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Virtual analog. So yeah, just, not, just to touch on that, one of the big things now is that it has a brand new engine that gives you a lot more power, a lot more of an analog sound. Okay. Which is, yeah. Do you want to show me some of the sounds of that, that are produced by that engine? Uh, yeah, so uh, this is one of them. This is just a pad, but I'll also show you what we haven't spoken about yet, the screen that allows you to do like a lot of real time editing, which is like an analog synth thing, which Great. makes this such a powerful instrument. So yeah. It sounds nice as well. It's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. And it's just like, again, the real con the real time control, I can just, you know, I've got pages of parameters. So I can, you know, pretty much every aspect of your sound, you can edit yeah. just from this sub display screen, which is massive. 
Wow. You know, so yeah, I've got a whirly sound that I specifically oh, yeah. saved for you to play. I'm not even oh, okay. I want you to play it, but yeah, I just want to see what you think. It was that was interesting. So what you actually discovered was uh, the aftertouch. Yeah. But the biggest thing about it now is it has polyphonic aftertouch. You've got three models. You've got the Montage M6, the Montage M7, and the Montage M8X. So the 8X is the one model that has polyphonic aftertouch. Right. And yeah, polyphonic. Yeah, aftertouch. It's sometimes aftertouch can be frustrating. Can't I it? know. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it needs to be polyphonic. So. Uh, Hang on. So I've actually got a sound that would be perfect. I've yeah. just realised why that is called Mr. Tape Deck now, yeah. Yeah. You know what's funny? As soon as you started playing it, you, you pushed... <laughs> yeah. I'm just heavy-handed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on, that. let's have a listen to... Yeah, show us some of the others. Or some of the, you say you've got a sound that uses a polyphonic aftertouch. Yeah, uh, so I've got this one here. Um, which is, I'll give you a little, a yeah, little go demo. On, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll scoot over here. Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, I'll go for it. playing softly obviously you're going to get yeah. the natural sound but if I dig in it the cut off the fit and a bit of modulation there yeah. as well yeah it takes a little getting used to but it's it's a nifty it's but the mo yeah but it, it also works if you've got a keyboard split so if you've got a yeah. pad sound down here yeah and you're holding the pad and you're doing a lead and you want yeah. some modulation on the lead that's then exactly it it doesn't make the pad start yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's exactly it. But it, it's it's polyphonic, so it means I can actually play chords as well. It's not just you know single note. That's the AN engine, which we'll we'll yes. listen to a bit more later on. We're going to play lots of sounds later mm -hmm. on in the video. Um, uh, but then there's the AWM2 engine, isn't it? Yes. There? Now this is to be honest with you, this is the interesting one. So they had that in the original montage, yeah. but they've improved it now. It, I mean, it, it's it's got to the point now where they've got something called expanded articulation where, you know, the AWM2 uh, engine is basically, it gives you your authentic instruments like brass, strings. Yeah. So to give it more of a realistic sound, there's new articulations that have been put in place so that when you play particular sounds, depending on how you approach the performance, you can get kind of unique articulations. Right, okay. So I can show you that. That's a lot of talk, so I'll just, yeah. I'll get straight to Go it. Go show us some of the sounds. Yeah. All right. So this one's one of my favourites. understand with this articulation is it is actually kind of like watching what you're listening to what you're doing isn't it yeah and yeah. then the sound is changing based on yes and how, you're... how I I mean if I if you depend on how you hit the notes so it's like you can actually yep. accent certain phrases depending on what you're playing just from the articulation so it's great cool. well I look forward to having a play through some of those because <laughs> I've I know that from other Yamaha products like the the Genos oh uh, yeah, the, yeah. Their home home keyboard yeah um, they've been using super articulation on there yeah. for years yeah but it's amazing. I mean, sometimes when you play, uh, if you if you play a, a fifth, it doesn't trigger anything. You play a sixth, yeah. and suddenly it does a run with a saxophone or something. It or, just goes to show. Yeah. They've, they've been ahead of, anyway, that's yeah. my opinion. They've been ahead of time for a minute. But it's it's great to see it in the, in the Montage M, you know. 
It's yeah, great. That, that's that's really good. Now, um, I've read the specs. Yes. <laughs> and did I? Is my understanding first of all? Uh, there's more. There, there are more samples in here now. Oh so, yeah, 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 yeah. There's a lot more samples. There's a lot more power. I mean, for the the keyboard scholars, you basically get like a preset ROM which gives you 128 uh, note polyphony for the AWM2, yeah. and that gives you 10 gig of presets. So right. in terms of your sample based sounds, you've got 10 gig, and then for the the user ROM where you save your sounds and stuff, you've got 3.7 gig which is double more than double what the montage yeah. original had so. and i understand that that's another 128 note poly as yes, well isn't it which makes 256 basically with all three engines so you've got yeah. the anx engine you've got the awm2 engine and then you've got the fmx okay you can get up to 400 note polyphony really? on this keyboard that's the most i've ever heard so far yeah yeah you know. and so with the awm engine then yes. you've got um You've got really, it's almost like I'm two engines. You've got the user engine and the preset engine. Yeah, basically, yeah. yeah. And they're both, yeah. Wow, that's, that's, that is powerful, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'll say this, and this is what shocks me the most. You know, with the original montage, the way Yamaha make up their sounds for the montage series is you have eight elements that make like one part. It gets a yes, bit technical. I but, know, yeah. Yeah, but you get 16 of those. But with this one, you don't have eight elements. You have 128 elements per part. So it's... A lot more, a lot more power. I and think. how many parts can you layer? You can layer 16. So it's basically right. 128 times 16 if you want to. My goodness. So if you get, get into really deep sound editing, yeah. so one, one sound <laughs> could actually consist of 128 yeah. samples. All basically. Playing together. I mean, in, you know, that's still. You lose your polyphony if you do yeah, that. You, yeah, well, th this is it. You'd have to be very <laughs> yeah. careful, very scarce with your polyphony. But it just goes yes. to show like how much power the yeah. montage has and well, montage M has. Um, and whilst we're talking about um, kind of comparing this with the previous gen, yeah. uh, does it load presets and things from, is, it, is the yeah. content compatible? Yeah. You know what, one thing I do love about Yamaha, I have to give them this that I love, is that when they do build new instruments, they always allow them to communicate in a way. I know a lot of yeah. other keyboards, it's like, that doesn't go with that. No, 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 no. <laughs> this, you can, load, you can load in your sounds from your Montage or from your Mo DX, like yeah. they all talk to each other, so. And yeah. even your DX7, I think to remember, you can't, yeah. <laughs> that really is backward compatibility, isn't it? I know, it? <laughs> I know. Well, you know what, as well, I mean, the DX7 was made before I was even born, but one thing they've made a note of is that with the FMX, yeah. um, you know, editing FM synthesis isn't easy. So another thing they've done is with the FMX engine, they've made it that you can actually edit all of your, you know, your analog parameters via the sub display screen. So even where the DX7 is concerned, they're like still trying to push and make things easier and easier. Yeah. Are there, have you got any of the DX sounds? Uh, any? Yes. I mean, uh, well, I've, uh, I've got oh, some cool. of, this is an FMX bass sound. Uh, yeah. Because you can see it says FMX. That's it, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, even if I had this bass, which is pretty cool, it's just what they've done now, you still get, you know, your 88 algorithms and the eight operators and all of that kind of stuff. So this is an FMX yeah. uh, bass. I can, you know, still go to parameters here and just... I can just control all the parameters of an FM sound. I can see the effects, right. master effect, the reverb variation. I can basically change everything here. So. Even though it's like an analog DX7 type sound, they've kind of brought us up to speed with being able to edit it in a It's hands up. Well, even compared with the previous montage. Yeah, yeah. Because wouldn't you have had to have done that through the screen? You would have had to do it through the screen. I mean, even I've seen, I don't know if this one doesn't have it, but you can even see, you can see the algorithm on just one part right. of the screen. You can see absolutely everything. So that's a massive game changer. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Because I think uh, with DX7s, yeah. everyone used the presets. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> that's all they ever did. And no, it was it was really difficult to program. Yeah. So yeah, bringing that out and onto the controllers is, is great. It's, it's massive, great. yeah, yeah. So these are your, can we just, could you just explain the structure of a, of a, of a sound or a preset, or what do you call it, is a performance? Is yes, it? Uh, yeah. yeah, so I can go to performance mode. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go to category and pick. Yeah. I mean, even this screen, the attributes I can choose, depending on the engine, I can say I only want ANX sounds that are new from the, the Montage M. 
Oh, okay. Or I can just say, dependent, as long as I don't select any category. So this will just basically show me all of the new sounds from the ANX engine for the Montage M. Or I can go back to the Montage or the Mon That's Motive great, isn't engine. it? That's yeah. really good. Which is cool. So I'll just choose, like, uh, I'm just going to choose a random sound and say, yeah, I'll go for this one. So this is the main screen for performance. So this now yep. allows me just to see all the parameters of of my patch. But the good yep. thing is, is there's several ways. For example, now they've got this new virtual analog view. So if I'm, I've got, you know, I've got my sound here. And if I want to change the filter, I can just press the filter icon and it takes me straight to the filter screen. Or I can change, you know, the shape of the sound. It takes me straight there. Um, so what they've done with performance mode is they've allowed it to be a lot more interactive in terms mm. of how you edit and your workflow. Uh, I've got these really cool knobs which even allow me to change what parameters I view on the performance. So if I want to just change my effects, I can ch turn the knob so I can see, you know, is it pan left or right, is it centre, how much reverb do I have. Um, I can also, you know, the arpeggio, the part, if the part is on or not. So it's just, it's so much more interactive. There's even a button, which I haven't shown you yet, called the navigation button. And this just shows you absolutely everything about your sound. So if I want to EQ, it takes me straight to the EQ. Press navigation again, yeah. you know, I can go to, you know, the arpeggio, the zone, the pitch. And this is everything to do with that one part, yes, basically. Yes, absolutely everything to do with just this. Because there's only one part, it's absolutely yeah. everything to do with this one part. Okay. If I had more parts, I could select which part and it would still show me the parameters for that particular part. Not only that, they've also made it that, you know, the CFX grand piano that they, they you know, mm. their champion piano is now, it used to be about three or four parts. It did? Yeah, now it's only just one. Can you show me that? Can yes, you, I can. Let's have a listen to so that. So again, we're going to go to, I'm going to let you play that actually. Okay. Uh, huh. I'm going to go to piano. <laughs> so I'm going to take these attributes off. So it shows me all of the sounds, piano, and I'm just going to search. I'm going to do it the traditional way. Actually, it's further up actually. Look how many sounds. So yeah, CFX, I'm going to give you a stage. So this is a CFX stage. It shows me um, the one part. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, it's even showing me, I can choose, you know, sequence and super knob. And I've just realized how they can put that on one part because you can now have 128. Exactly. Uh, what do you call it? Um, oscillators, is it? But per <laughs> elements, yeah. elements per sound. Yeah. So yeah, that's the CFX. I've not even played the CFX too much, so. All right, okay. Yeah, I do it. love the CFX, the Yamaha <laughs> CFX sound because it cuts, it cuts through. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's, it, it, you really make it cut through as well. It's still... But, let's play gently. Okay. And do you know what? I love that. <laughs> I'm going to let it's this little, little secret here. <laughs> I also did. Oh my, my hair. No, like, oh, oh, he's got goosebumps. Oh, <laughs> oh my God, excuse me. He's got goosebumps. Uh, the, um, I didn't want to touch the keyboard before uh, we played because always you 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 get much more expression and mm. and and. Uh, when you're first play, you know, and there's nothing like the first play on a brand new instrument. And oh my goodness, I mean, I've played the CFX piano loads of times, you know, but it, it, yeah, is in lots of Yamaha products. But that that feels like, for me, it's the it's not just the sound; it's the integration of the, the yeah, key yeah, with the sound. Yeah, because um, when I actually first started playing this keyboard, I was like, it's quite light, and I yeah. didn't know how. When, before we even turned it on, I was like, this is quite light. I don't know how I feel about it. But somehow, and again, we're still I'm still trying to find out what the technology is, but it. 
it feels completely different. Not only that, I mean, they've improved the sound of the Montage M compared. The Montage yeah. sounded great, and yeah. you know, the Modi X sounded great, but they've pushed it even further. So all of the samples, where you might have to see effects on the original, it sounds completely it does. different now. You've got to play one more piano. Go on then. Just one more, that's it. I don't want any trouble, uh, but I've got this one. This is a, a felt piano, so it's a, it's oh, a lot warmer. Okay. Yes. But um, I'd love to just hear, I'll put it, yeah, I'd love to just hear what it sounds like under your hands. No, I don't know what I'm going to play. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. I've just written a soundtrack. Oh my goodness. <laughs> When someone else plays and their approaches, it's it's night and day, honestly. Do you know some some piano samples? I find that, that it's almost like when they get to the top octave, they forget about it. They yeah, don't yeah, yeah. But yeah. look at and the touch. You can even hear the you can hear the dust. Do that again slow. I don't know what I did. <laughs> <laughs> you just 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 floated. It's, it's incredible. And you know what else I like about how they program the sounds? They've taken into, in, I mean, I feel like they have that, this piano is quite warm, and so they've left the parameter for EQ gain, knowing that if you push this parameter, it brightens the piano just in case you want to change it. So now you'll play, mm -hmm. it'll sound a lot. Oh. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah, I, I, I mean, it's it's very playable, isn't it? Instantly, it's, yeah, it it really it is. Just and makes you want to play. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've not I've not made any user. So everything we've played is presets. Yeah. So I'm like, well, if that's what the presets. We all sound, love presets, don't yeah, we? we you do. Know? We do. <laughs> I've got a small mini surprise for you as well. Oh, go on. <laughs> so what they've done is they've actually added the new. Um, They've added their VCM rotary speaker effect from the YC. Oh, okay. Into this. Yeah. So um, I've selected that, but not only that, they've also, um, we've got this new ribbon controller. And what they've actually done is they've oh, allowed the that. ribbon to simulate the rotary effect. Right. So okay. if I press shift, let me see if I can, if I press shift and I go to, in fact, if I press shift, and press ribbon setting, it'll take me oh, to the look screen. Oh, look at that, yeah. right. Yeah. So you can see that there's three parameters on oh, the ribbon. Okay. So that's stop, this is slow, and this is fast. Right. So now, yeah. even to the point where if I, depending on which set I'm, setting I'm on, yeah. the, the super knob actually responds as well, which is pretty cool. Some people are not going to like that it flashes so much. You but can switch that off though. I remember yeah. the old one. You can off, switch yeah. it off. I like it though. I love <laughs> it. Yeah, even the, the, the colours are nice. But yeah. I mean, if I stop the rotary, it will slow down. Oh, that's show. That's a visual yeah. of the rotary. Yeah. So it's, oh, it's, look at that. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> that is, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So it's like, like now you can play the organ. And I mean, I, I think they've tried to almost recreate the feel of when you're playing a real Hammond and you're, you know, yeah. you know how we are. Yeah, um, yeah, so yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. It's pretty cool, yeah, obviously. We constantly want to be changing. Yeah. Is, it, is it also a sign to the modulation? Yes, it right. is, it's still. It, you, I mean, you can choose it still speeds up oh, and it's still. Down. So the rotary can be assigned to more than one controller yes, at the same time. basically. But if yeah. you, I thought this was really cool that you can, you know. Yeah. yeah. No, no, that is good. I, like I said, I love these LEDs because I've played keyboards with um, ribbon controllers before. Yeah, yeah. And if you if the ribbon controller is set at a certain position, you might you might be playing and thinking that sound doesn't sound right. You don't realise that the ribbon's been yeah, activated. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. And I mean, in this case, you can actually see the parameter because yeah. normally with ribbons, it's just the ribbon, no, no yeah. light. So this is now, it's great. And even I mean, there's synth sounds that you can play, and it's mm. you can see what the ribbon does depending on how it's been set for that particular patch, which is. And can one controller control more than one parameter as well? Yes. Right. Okay, yes. Cool. It can. 
it, again, it's great. It's, it's, it's assignable. There's, I mean, even the page jump, depending on where you set it, you can set the page jump to take you straight to all of your assignable parameters. Oh, right. OK. What, so can this jump you to, you can choose which page that jumps you to? Yes. So, right. OK. Which is, which is pretty cool as well. So if we go back, if I press that, does that take us back? Oh, it takes us back to the before. Yes, so you're getting ahead of it. It? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I don't know what this is going to sound like. So here we go. So if I hit, there you go. Just so you know that that distortion that's not on the recording that is that's the effect that's yeah, the over yeah. it's cool yeah yeah cool <laughs> cool it's pretty cool. And yeah well, because the keyboard's light as well it, it's not you bad can, yeah you can play you can, yeah, you can solo on it can't you no yeah. problem at all it's, it's really nice so that's you know they didn't need to do that but i'm glad no. they did you know yeah you know. now actually something when we were playing the piano earlier you said about the cfx sounds just sounds better yes um i read they've they've done something with the outputs or the A to D converters or something. Yeah, I believe they've improved the converter. Yeah. Because again, like I was saying, the montage, you can, you can tell the montage and the Modi X, they sound, they sound good, but they've improved them even more. So, you know, the quality of sound you're getting, you can really hear it. You can really hear it. Well, you can. I mean, I heard it here just through the studio monitors we're yeah. using, but yeah. I would imagine it on stage because for me, it's so important when you're playing a gig that your keyboard cuts through. Yeah. Because the yeah. guitarist is always so loud, the yeah. drums are so loud. Trying to compete, because we give out so many frequencies, it yeah. gets lost. It's true. I think the reason why the montage has done so well in the church world, you know we play, we all yeah. play loud. We all, yeah. <laughs> we all play <laughs> yeah. loud. And, and I've been in situations where I have played keyboards in church and your piano will get lost. Yeah, there's no, exactly. There's no way around it. Your piano yeah. will get lost. That's actually why, you know, I think the montage and the motif and um, all their keyboards have done so well over the years because the piano cuts through in the mix. Yeah, well, Yamaha has always generally had a fairly bright piano sound, but yeah. we, that's what you need. That's what yeah. you need. But yeah, to have a bit more guts on the outputs as well, that's, that's, I'm looking forward, I am looking forward to playing one of these with the band. I really yeah. am. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's honestly super. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm not going to lie, I'm going home to my, my montage original and I'm like, I've got to figure uh, something uh, out. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's great. Well, actually, just uh, just for, for my own understanding. Yeah. Okay, so you've got um, a a performance consists of up to sixteen parts. You say yes, that's right. But then you've got scenes. So so can we just explain the difference between parts and scenes? Okay, cool. So th this is what for me. This is what makes. This is one of the points that is really really important for me personally, because when you're playing as a live musician, you obviously want to seamlessly move from, from one part of the song to the next yep. part. So what you would normally do, I haven't set anything up because it's obviously still new, but what I would normally do in a performance, say if I'm playing the, the verse and I'm just yep. playing. And that's my verse, but when I go to the chorus, I want to lift it. Yep. What I would do is I'd set it so that when I press scene two, my strings come in. Um, oh. So it just means that you can actually set up sections of a song. So, I mean, again, I've not got anything set up, but normally you All just- All within the same performance. Within the yeah. same performance. So it just means that I can play a, a song and have sounds coming in and out in different setups um, just by pressing the scene button. So so basically a scene, Yes. each scene is a snapshot of the performance That's as it's set at that time. Exactly, exactly it. Exactly Saves it. you having different performances yeah. within one song. You can have the same one performance, yeah. but different edits of it. That's exactly within, yeah. it. I mean, I've, I've done gigs where people are like, where's your top keyboard? I, was, I don't really need it for this gig. And they look at me funny, but it yeah. is because of scenes you can seamlessly move. You don't hear any, you know, you won't get any kind of cuts of sounds no. or anything like that. But that, but it's, the great thing about it is it's so easy. Normally you just hold shift and press and it will take a snapshot of what your, your oh, parameters are. Oh, it's easy as that? Yeah. Um, I mean, I turn the scenes on, so yep. I go to scenes at the side tab and you just basically turn them all on three, four, five, depending on how many you want. So for example, okay. seven's off. So if yep. I press seven and then I turn on mixing or 
I can just turn on mixing and it activates scene seven. But what you need, normally would just need to do is just take a, a snapshot of how your, your parameters are. And then, okay, so this, this scene is using two sounds. Oh, yes, see there. Th that's two sounds. So this is part one, that's part two. Yeah. Um, if you want to get into more of the technical editing, you go to part one and go to edit. I mean, that's one of probably two or three ways to get there. Yeah. And then um, this will show you your part. But again, if I want to change and go to the elements, I press part one and I go, and this shows me my elements. Right. Okay. And that's where it becomes. It's, you, it, yeah, it gets. But there could be 128 of those. Yes. <laughs> I haven't dived into that yet. No, if you don't, if I, but if it, because we're on part one, I press navigation though. That's ah, yes. then that takes you to a more graphical representation. Exactly. And then if I want to move, I mean, this is the easiest way. I can go to part two, and oh, it will show great. me yeah. all the parameters for part two. Oh uh, yeah, that's that's. Uh, I love that screen. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's this screen really is good. because it just means. Yeah. I, I mean, I can already look and see that this is actually uh, an A and X part because it's saying oscillator one. Yeah, I believe. So, um, I know A and X gives you three oscillators and a, no a noise. Yeah. Generator as well. So that tells me part two is the A and X engine, but part one is most likely going to be uh, A W. M2, but yeah. I mean that's that's getting more technical. But what about is there can we is there a blank performance? Yes. So if we wanted to just build something up, a piano and a pad or something, how easy is that to do? So you're you're testing me now. Sorry. No, it's alright. <laughs> <laughs> so what I can do um, is I can normally go to when I go to category search, I go to init initial. So it, this oh, yeah. will always give you it gives you the option of the A and X engine from scratch, yeah, or the AWM2 engine from scratch, yeah. or FMX from scratch. Okay. Um, so it depends on what kind of sound. So if I'm going to make a piano sound, yeah, I'll probably choose it. AWM2. Yeah. Um, okay. So if we did that. Oh, there we go. This is like the initial. Yeah. And then what I would do from there, I'd probably go to the navigation screen and you'd use this screen to start editing. That's sound. actually create a sound. What about if we had some AWM sounds already we want to put into a, like, like mix a CFX with a pad or something, how would you do that? Okay, so if I wanted to do that, I'd go to category and I would just basically select my parts. So I'll turn, turn this off. So let's say, what did we say, CFX? Yeah, Check or it. anything like that, yeah. Yeah, so we choose CFX. Let's choose concert, just for fun. So that's part okay. one is yeah. here's the CFX, and then I'd add another part, go to category, and I'd look for pad. Yep. And I'll just choose my pad. So. Great. So say we, let's just say we go for uh, film pad. So now film pad has two other parts. Yep. And then our piano has one part. And then you would basically have, and then what you'd start to do is, is tweak, you know, your, your sound depending on how your levels are. And does it, each part, so when you're selecting a part, it's yes. bringing in the effects and everything yes. from that. So you, right, that's great because that can be very confusing. Or yeah. the other yeah. brands of keyboard, you, you, if you're in a, a multi mode like oh, this. Oh, yeah. You bring yeah. in a sound, but it hasn't got no effects on it. It hasn't got no effects. And then you have to sign. <laughs> yeah. Again, another point I haven't even showed you is I can actually go straight to the effects for a part as well by pressing shift and pressing effects overview. Well, it's uh, navigation. Yes. Yeah. And so it, it basically takes me to this is part one effect. So this is for the piano, but it's just showing me everything that's going on. Um, there's a lot going on there, but you can, it just goes to show, to see what's going on. You don't have to go through loads of screens. If no. you know the shortcuts, it takes you straight that, there. I like that. Now, one, one thing that I felt was a little bit restrictive with the previous montage yes. was the, the MIDI side of it. Okay. Where you couldn't actually, from what, for, and certainly with the first generation of it, where oh, they yeah. updated it with software, you couldn't actually control it with another keyboard whilst you were playing the sounds you can yes. have a different set of sounds whilst you were playing these sounds on the on the keyboard, but I understand that's changed now. I believe it. Yeah, it has. I haven't I haven't done lots of digging in the MIDI side, but I do know that you can now do sixteen channels. You can send and receive sixteen stereo channels. That's it. And each part can either be set to an external controlling external device yeah. or an internal keyboard sound. Exactly. Um, I believe there's a parameter. I'm just going to check. I'm going to find out. It might not be for this one, but you can basically see all the channels 
that you're sending or receiving from yeah. the, uh, the performance screen, which is great. I do think they've changed the integration a lot. There it is, channel one, yeah. channel two, channel three, and then you can see it says internal, external. So you That's can it. already and, that control. And if it's if the keyboard part's yep. shown, then it's activated on the keyboard. But yes. now what you can do is you can, yeah, look, you can, you can turn, turn it off. off. Yeah. Which means you could activate that those channels from an external. So you could have a little controller keyboard yeah. to give you a synth lead, but it's been generated by Montage. Which is absolutely yeah. A you game could changer. never do it before. Yeah. Um, and I think that's that for me. That's that's massive because sometimes you might want to control a, a vocoder unit or something. Anything. It's Although true. maybe not actually because it's got a vocoder in it. Well, I was going to say I did a, <laughs> I used a vocoder for a, um, a, a tour I was doing, and it yeah, yeah it was. I love Vocoder. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty cool. I mean, you know what? I, I can I, if I talk to a keyboard player, I know they've had this issue where you're using a MIDI controller and yeah. you're trying to figure out how to get it to talk to the other yeah. instrument, and it just doesn't work out. And so I like the fact they've paid attention to external MIDI and being able to use 16 channels and it being easy yeah. as well. Because a lot of keyboards, it's not easy. No. Being honest, no, it's still re it's really important part of being a keyboard player is being yeah. able to control external things. Yeah. And have, you know, have a sound module hidden on the floor behind you or something when you're playing, just give you an extra <laughs> one particular sound that, yeah. you know, so it's, yeah, it's, it's true. really, really good. Um, and also the uh, USB, it's got USB audio interface, isn't it? Like the old one. Yeah, did. it is like the old one, six ins and I think it's 32 outs. So every part, so it's all 16 parts can be sent out in stereo to yes. your door. Yeah. Yes, okay. which is, I, I'm still, you know, chuffed by even the way my original montage responds to its door because I like the fact I can, I press performance and I press a remote and I can just, it's just really easy. But I, I really do like that they thought about the integration for doors and for external MIDI. Yeah, no, it is great. Well, Mike, thank you very, very oh, much for pleasure. showing this to me. It's, it's, it's brilliant. It's, it's utterly brilliant. It's been a pleasure. So Thank you. what we're going to do now is we're just going to play some sound so you can have a really good listen and really experience uh, the Montage M. And like I said earlier, of course, if you want to come down and, and play one to you, for yourself in one of our stores, then please do just get in touch with us first because there aren't many Montage M's around in the UK just to make sure we've got one in the store that's closest to you. So enjoy Montage M. If you've got any questions, don't hesitate to get in touch. And uh, thanks very much for watching.